Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today we are discussing this, this beautiful spun woolen, woolen, <laughs> BFL yarn and listening to the artwork outside because it's in bulk people and spring is coming and we are beginning to see signs of life including the army yard work people so you know that's a thing and then also we're talking about my shifty sweater spin so yeah stay tuned so first off for the january patreon swag packages you guys got bfl roving in this colorway and oh, it was inspired by daffodils poking through the bits of snow. It's way too early in January for that, but the, the mentality is really upon me. <laughs> so this is mine spun up and kind of a hot mess. I did a woolen single and I really worked on my woolen spinning technique. I did spin one uh, fatter and one thinner, but actually I found that with the woolen technique and the blooming, uh, the weight is basically the same. I just got more yardage from the one that was thinner. So the one that I spun a little bit fatter, um, A, it was more difficult to do. It didn't come as intuitively as you know. My number one rule is don't fight the fiber. Good Lord, don't fight the fiber. <laughs> but it also just took up more fiber. It just made a bulkier weight of, or like a, a heavier of the same weight, so it didn't get bulkier. So yeah, my experiment uh, led me to the kind of further exploration of the term grist. And I've linked an interesting article uh, about grist down below because I don't even grok it enough to really explain it to you other than it's kind of the uh, Venn diagram of yardage and weight and the middle period is is grist I guess so you can have like not that much yardage with a lot of weight or I guess it would be yardage weight and diameter so yeah that middle point there we go yeah diameter is what I was going for because I was thinking of actual like physical ounces <sighs> so a four ounce braid could be spun into uh, many different weights of many different yardages you see I'm getting confused even trying to explain it just read the article and then you can be confused too. Or maybe you can just explain it to me down below. <laughs> I think this is one of those that I have to experience myself, which is why I kind of did this experiment. Um, so yeah, I have two skeins and they have slightly different yardages. They're the same weight, same colorway, spun on the same day even, um, same woolen, but they ended up two different ounces. So yeah. I'm gonna stop talking about that before I confuse myself further and make this really, really confusing. It's probably already confusing. It's so confusing that now I'm thinking I need some synonyms for confusing. That is not a good place to be. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I am going to uh, share with you the video of how this is, and if you are a Patreon patron, you have access to the voiceover where I talk about kind of my specific thoughts on the woolen spin. If you are not a Patreon patron, then you can enjoy this music video version. So when we're finished talking about that, then we'll meet back and then I'll update you on my sweater spin. Okay, so this is the fiber before I spun it fresh out of the dye pots before I put it in the Patreon packages. Um, here, I show you, I tried a different uh, braiding method and I really like it. I got it from the sheep spot. She braided hers this way. Okay, so I started with trying to do the woolen at the very beginning. <laughs> but it popped up. So my little woolen pro tip is if you're dying in the first, uh, you know, two feet before it even gets into your bobbin, 
perhaps just do whatever method you usually do just to get it on the bobbin. <laughs> so there's my first little pro tip here. The second one is I'm continuing to perfect my over the hand method. And I think the key is the angle. So you kind of use the edge of your hand to control how speedy the twist goes in using <laughs> my method. But here you can see I'm using my fingers and it looks like I'm gripping it. I'm not. I'm letting it slide through and I'm barely even touching it. Um, I find that that's not I, I want to use that thumb, like you can see, a little bit too uh, liberally. So I try to keep the thumb out of the equation. I keep going out of the screen here, so I apologize for that. But this These up-close clips are the real time of me doing this. Um, so yeah, you can see how I'm taking it gentle. I also learned that there can be more twist than I kind of was comfortable with in the single but it'll all set out when you set the yarn. So I was really worried at first about over twisting it. And so I, I really struggled with that, but it didn't matter in the end. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out right away is I mixed the fatter and the thinner spin together because in the clips you literally couldn't tell the difference and it just made a more beautiful viewing experience to mix them together for lots of different angles. <laughs> If you wondered where the two different uh, weights were, they're, they're both in here because you can't tell the difference. So if I switch fiber, then you can tell I'm switching between, see like right there, I was at a blue and now I'm at a yellow. That's what's happening. Um, this method seemed to go a lot faster than my other methods. Also, I tried a little pre-drafting there. Didn't really enjoy that. I don't recommend it. The natural sort of toothiness of the fiber really helped allow me to control how much spin went into it. Here we go. We have my little helper here. She was, she's so magical. She even put pants on specifically for this video. She was very enthusiastic. So you can kind of see how I'm having a little bit of trouble controlling uh, the diameter of the yarn and making it super consistent. But as the fiber bloomed in the set, it was really hard to tell. It's not like really super thick and thin and lumpy. The bloom of this BFL uh, controlled a lot of the <laughs> errors, I guess, <laughs> learning, learning bumps. I also felt like this method allowed the blending of the colors more than the pinch pull method, which was a bit weird because the fibers are almost at a steeper angle of twist because of how they're kind of pulled in. Um, you know, if you were gonna roll a piece of paper, you can roll it into a straight tube where you can kind of yank it so it's more of a diagonal tube. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, that's kind of the vibe that I was getting between the two. And I know that you can check on twist angle and that's a whole science of its own. I don't want to be that sciency, I, I barely am sciency enough to explain grit, grist. But that was something that I noticed purely from a visual perspective. The blending of the colors were kind of really smooth in a unique way compared to my regular worsted pinch pull method. Now I don't actually pinch pull. You know, I kind of pinch and then yank back all the way and then pinch again and kind of I do a modified woolen but this I don't even do the pinch so you can see how I've fit my previous motion of leaning in and pulling back and leaning in and pulling back and leaning in and pulling back in that rhythm that I already love I applied that to the woolen so that way it could travel over my hand and again, here in these real-time clips, you can see how slowly I'm treadling, and that was a big factor for me, is learning to slowly treadle. Um, whoop, I'm fixing a drop. So yeah, that was my big takeaways, is I was able to kind of get this by mimicking the spinning body rhythm that I already loved, 
and then controlling the speed of my treadle and the exact motion of my fingers. So for me, the key was marrying the like macro body language to slightly corrected micro rather than looking at the micro first, which is what I spent literally years trying to do is trying to look at the micro and then, you know, exactly copy somebody else. And that wasn't working for me. <laughs> so yeah, I think I have said everything I wanted to say about this um, process for me. And yeah, my tips, like I said, are if you're having trouble getting it on the bobbin, just go ahead and do the method you usually do to get it up there. And then isolate different parts of your body and tweak one or two, oh, little helper, tweak one or two little things and continue to tweak and change to see if that will get you where you wanna be rather than trying to fully mirror somebody else's method because that's gonna be really difficult because then you're trying to basically relearn how to spin all the way from the beginning again, which is not what you're trying to do. You're just trying to learn a different technique. So don't, do not try to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> Punny, huh? Punny. So yeah, um, I think I will put some music and catch you at the, uh, the end row.
so hopefully you found that interesting and again just to remind you if you're a patreon person um you have access to the voiceover if you're not a patreon person you can support the show and get access to all of the cool perks sometimes it's the voiceover version and sometimes it's the music only version usually the voiceover version though um and then you can do that by following the links down below that's one of the main ways that you can support my family and also this show um you could also purchase my books they're available in digital and most of them are in print format except for one which i'm working on and you can purchase spinning wheels if you would like i am a spinolution dealer and more than happy to answer your questions about spinolution wheels which is what i use for all of my spins now because they're the best <laughs> And actually, just as a side note, I tried really hard to not get on the Spinolution bandwagon because I was like, I want to be different and cool. They're just the best. They are different and cool. That's why everybody wants one. Because they're the best. But that's a different topic. On the subject of my uh, sweater spin, I have this bobbin of a Yak Superfine Merino Silk spin that I finished. I actually dyed it while I was sick and <laughs> felt it a little bit. So that was disappointing, but it spun up fine. And then I'm going to apply this guy. Oh, by the way, this is a four ounce bobbin and it's got four ounces of fiber on there and I could have probably fit a little bit more. So in case you were wondering what the four ounce bobbins look like, because they feel kind of small compared to some of the other wheels, um, but they are mighty. And in that same dye batch, I dyed some of this mystery luxury fiber. It's got a really high plant base in it. You can see how the middle kind of like barely got dyed because it's mostly planty. And this Romney, Romney? No. Ramboulet. Ramboulet. This Ramboulet. So it's all from literally the same dye pot. And I have... I'll list the dyes that I use down below, but I believe it was the Midnight Blue, the Berry Crush, and the... those are Dharma. And then the Country Classics like a vivid purple or whatever that is. So that's what this is. I just used those three. And what I was going for is one of those, have you seen the purple succulents? They're really, well, they kind of look like this. They're kind of berry and purple. And there's some lighter spots that are a bit almost gray, which is what I was going for with the plant-based fibers, kind of that sort of washed out lavender gray thing going on. Um, yeah, so I'm going to apply it with this and that's going to be the main color for my shifty sweater, which I am using all of the rest of the colors are kind of a green and blue, regular, like greeny succulent colors. So that's where I'm going with that. Um, and I have some of this is also a Ramboulet, some bats, and I think I will... <sighs> The problem is, is I only have four ounces of this main ply and I don't want to kind of have two separate main colors. I want to kind of get a flow. So I'm not sure how that will work. It might just have to be like the binding off edges or something like that. Maybe, I don't know. I think I'll have enough. I think I will have enough with the eight ounces. Um, but we will see. I don't know. I won't know until after I wind it off and set it and measure it. And yeah. And since I've never done a sweater spin, I don't really know how to predict it too much. Kind of. But I've never really tried to spin for yardage before. So we'll see. Worst case scenario, I'll just have to order more of this and get another mystery plant thing and try it that way. So that's that. And then on the front of my nurtured sweater, let's see if I can reach back here. I washed the next part of my carding situation and this is a jamtlin. These are in Swedish 
but oh my gosh, this is legitimately the softest fiber I have ever felt in my life. I washed it with the Unicorn Beyond Clean and it leaves just the tiniest, sweetest touch of lanolin still. And oh, oh the crimp. I mean, this stuff puts ultra fine merino to shame. I have the fine merino here and it's, it's not as good. It just isn't as good. This stuff is like, holy crap. Um, if you remember, I did an unboxing of this from my friend in Sweden, and um, I will link the store down below again, because I think I'm pretty much just gonna have to... <sighs> I'm not even faking this for the shot. It's just this good. I just want to cuddle it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to order like seven sheep's worth of that stuff. Which is closely followed by this Gotland cross. It is a fennel. 75% and Gotland Cross 25%. And I washed it the same way and oh, oh it's so good. And neither of these had even one, not even one piece of vegetable matter. I mean, American sheep breeder peoples, you need to up your game because that was amazing, amazing. So that's where I'm at there. I think I'm gonna maybe get a set of combs because carding all of this is taking, you know, my entire life. But yeah, so I think we've wrapped up on this little update slash talk. Um, yeah, if you have any thoughts or comments, share them in the comment section down below. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you want to keep up with these shenanigans, hit the sub subscribe button. And if you want to support the show, <laughs> check out the Patreon or any of those other resources that I mentioned before, the books, the wheels, all that good stuff. And that would be an excellent way to support me and the show and also further your fibery career, which is what I like to do. I mean, truly, that's what I'm here for. So I will see you next time. Bye.